Looking for some of the best weapons to use in the early game that will deal a ton of damage? Here are some great recommendations to get you started and we'll follow the order you can unlock them in. To start off there's the HG-003 Coquillette. This is a handgun that you can get after the second mission destroy artillery installations and the game recommends that you should run them in a double trigger config with one in each arm so that is exactly what you should do if you pick them up because for the cheap price of 35,000 credits these things delete enemies by quickly building up the stagger gauge. You should be good to use these through the the early missions of chapter 1, but if you want to stick to the standard RF-024 Turner base weapon, that will save you a bit of money and you can do that too. It's worth knowing that one of the easiest ways to defeat enemies is to trigger staggers, and a weapon type that's amazing at doing this are the shotguns. These deal quick burst damage and you will see the bar chonk up, so one of our recommendations is the awesome SG-026 Haldeman. This can be purchased from the parts shop after completing missions 6 and 7 in chapter 1 and it will cost you 75,000 credits. These are a close range weapon so make sure you are within optimal range when using them and again we recommend using them in akimbo as the damage they deal will be good enough to get you through most of the early bosses. But if you are looking to purchase a good energy weapon option then after completing those same previous missions you will then be able to purchase the VVC 760 PR. In the parts shop you can get this for 202,000 COAM. This one is great great against groups of enemies as it has a projectile that does area of effect damage, because it explodes into energy balls on impact. But you will need to be aware that the slow moving projectile may cause you to miss a few hits if you aren't on point with your aiming and timing. Also, after completing chapters 6 and 7, one of the best shoulder weapons to use throughout the majority of the game is the VP60 LCS, and it cost 147,000 COAM at the parts shop. Just like the VVC, this is an energy weapon but this time it sends out a fast moving beam which you have the option to charge. The great thing about this weapon is that you can put it on each of your shoulder slots and it will allow you to basically snipe enemies and rack up stagger damage on boss health bars easily. If you're having trouble with the early game bosses, I highly recommend you throw this on because this pretty much carried me through most of those fights no problem. And remember these can be charged to increase their damage even further so make sure to utilize that. But a weapon that's on top of many players list which is unlocked after mission 6 and 7 is the VVC 70 VPM. It's a shoulder weapon that acts similar to the VVC as it explodes on impact making it good for the same reasons as the VVC 760 PR. And you can grab this one for 96,000 COAM. But after you've finished and moved on from chapter 1, you can then throw on the DFGA08 Uben as you get this from mission 11, Attack the Watchpoint. It will cost you 170,000. But if you want to live out the fantasy of using the Heavy Arms Gundam, then this option is for you. I will say though that having these in both arms will use up all of your ammo very quickly. And while running out of ammo isn't something that occurred while using it for me, every time I did use it and then come out of a mission, there was a massive ammunition cost bill at the end reducing my money reward. But you should still try these out, you will be surprised at how fast they can absolutely destroy enemies and bosses. From Software have put a big focus on building out the melee mechanics in Armored Core 6, and using the Assault Boost makes it an even more viable option, so while the starting laser blade is a very good option, if you don't want to dish out the the money for a new weapon, the PB-033M Ashmead pile driver does insane damage and it may actually be busted for melee builds early game. Melee weapons can only be equipped on the left arm slot, meaning you won't be able to dual wield this bad boy, but it doesn't require a charged attack on a staggered or non-staggered enemy, so when you have the window of opportunity you can get some massive damage. If you are into or thinking about building a melee build, then this may be one that you want to try out, and you get it after defeating Mission 11 Attack the Watchpoint, and it can be purchased for 185,000. There is another awesome weapon combo that you want to keep your eye out for after completing Mission 11, and this time they're for your shoulder slots called Songbirds. These are relatively inexpensive coming in at 182,000 compared to the over 200k price of other shoulder weapons, and this is probably one of the fastest ways to stagger enemies. 
They're also easy to use in intense battles because they have very clear animations for when they are reloaded because sometimes you do tunnel vision in a fight and forget to look at those small indicators on the target, so that is nice to have as well. After completing chapter 2, which ends with mission 14, there's also a bunch of upgrades to the weapons that you can consider. There are two new shotguns on the table to try out, the Sweet 16, which is a ye olde looking shotgun that only has one clip in it, but deals out the damage by unleashing all of the barrels of the shotgun at once. You can get this after completing mission 14, Ocean Crossing, and you can buy it at the shop for 49,000. But what I think is the better shotgun is also unlocked after these missions, and that is the SG-027 Zimmerman. We found that we preferred this one due to the reduced downtime between shots, and the damage difference didn't seem all that noticeable when actually dealing damage to a target compared to the Sweet 16. But it's worth noting that the Sweet 16 is meant to have more damage in total split across its pellets. Another tip if you're having trouble with the weapons and don't feel as mobile as you would like to be, then remember you can switch out your legs on your AC to provide more mobility when firing your weapons with a lot of recoil. The easiest option is to slap on some tank threads as these will give you mobility, and the option to basically run things over, and the ability to shoot weapons that would normally cause you to recoil but will now shoot normally. This makes them awesome for fighting bosses. We do prefer aerial mobility though, so if you're like us you might want to opt for the tetrapod leg. This allows you to float in the air, as they reduce the cost letting you rain down damage from above on enemies and bosses which is very useful. If you're looking to get the tank legs, you can get them after mission 8 in the shop, they're called the LG022T Bornemissa. While the current tetrapod legs I'm using are the VP424, which is also unlocked after that same mission. These are just some of the best early game weapons and options that you should try out, but if you have any suggestions or things that you've found incredibly useful, tell us in the comments down below. And make sure to check out these two videos on the screen now. We have so much content coming your way, you're going to miss out if you don't keep your eye on the channel. But if you haven't seen these videos on the screen, definitely give them a shot and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.